Now we're going to talk about how to solve a quadratic trigonometric equation. So a quadratic trigonometric equation that contains a single function is an equation in which all trigonometric functions involved are raised to positive powers with the highest power being the second power. All right, so let's translate this. Okay, um, when you have a quadratic trigonometric equation, the good news is that all of your trigonometric functions are going to be the same. So you're gonna have all sines or all cosines, for example, okay? Um, so you will see the highest power be the second power. So let me give you an example. When we don't work with trigonometric functions, we're used to something quadratic being ax squared plus bx plus c, okay? So now think of replacing the x with the cosine of theta. So it's gonna be a number times the cosine of theta squared plus a number times the cosine of theta plus C, okay? So it's gonna look something like this. Say my number A is two. So two cosine squared theta plus, I'm making up A, B, and C here, three cosine theta minus one, okay? So you can see we have the same trigonometric function throughout, only a cosine of theta. Um, here, the cosine of theta is raised to a positive power, it's raised to the second power. Here, cosine of theta is raised to a positive power, it's raised to the first power. The highest power of cosine of theta is gonna be the second power, okay? It's fitting the mold ax squared plus bx plus c. x is the same thing as cosine of theta, okay? So that's how you're going to recognize that you're dealing with a quadratic trigonometric equation, okay? Um, solving one very much parallels solving ax squared plus bx plus c, okay? To solve a quadratic trigonometric equation that contains a single, single trigonometric function, use factoring the quadratic formula or extracting square roots. Those are the techniques we use to solve ax squared plus bx plus c, okay? At the bottom here, I have, a, uh, I have the quadratic formula written down in case you've forgotten it. Uh, recall that the quadratic formula states that the solutions to the formula ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero are given by x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, so keep that in mind. Let's move on to page four in example three, where we need to solve the given equation over the interval zero to two pi and also for all solutions. The equation this time is three times the sine, square, sine squared of x minus sine of x minus two is equal to zero. Keep in mind here that we are using x's and we're also told to first solve over the interval zero to two pi. So x, the angle, is being measured in radians, okay? We need to realize that this is a quadratic trigonometric equation. When you look at it, we have a single trigonometric function. We only have sine of x involved. Here it's raised to the second power and here it's raised to the first power. So we've got one trigonometric function and the highest power of it is the second power. So that makes this quadratic, okay? How do you solve a quadratic trigonometric function? Well, if you go back to page one and you look at the methods that are listed here, we can either factor, do something called extracting the square roots, or we can use the quadratic formula, okay? So these are all methods that we use to solve a regular old quadratic equation like ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. We're just applying the same methods to a quadratic trigonometric equation now, okay? Um, I'm gonna work this one by factoring. Okay, you could use the quadratic formula on it. Um, factoring doesn't always work, okay? And that's true of ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero as well. 
quadratic formula always works. So that's one of the benefits of using the quadratic formula over factoring. Um, but you should know how to do both. This particular equation is not a good candidate for extracting square roots. You may have forgotten what that is, but uh, we will go through that in a, in a later example here. Okay, I'm going to factor, okay, uh, just to give you some practice with factoring trig stuff. To factor, or to use the quadratic formula for that matter, one side has to be zero before you start. Okay, so lucky for us, one side is already zero, so now I can factor the non-zero side. If the sine x is throwing you off, okay, for factoring, this is what I want you to do. I want you to let u equal sine of x, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to change the original equation over to u's, okay? That will get rid of the sine x for now. Then you can factor it because it'll look like something you're used to. And then once it's factored, we can change it back over to sine x, okay? So here we go. Um, this is 3 times the sine squared of x, so we're multiplying sine x by itself. I'm just trying to write this out to help you factor it. Minus sine x minus 2 equals 0. Okay, everywhere we see a sine x, we're going to replace it with u. So this is going to be 3 times u times u minus u minus 2 equals 0. So we're going to have 3 times u squared minus u minus 2 equals 0. Okay, this is probably easier to factor because you're not distracted by the sine x. Okay, so let's try to factor it. If you're not good with your factoring techniques, that's okay. Just try, you know, guess and check, trial and error, whatever. Okay, so 3u squared, that's going to break down into 3u and u. And then 2 is going to break down into 2 times 1, but I've got to make sure that when I multiply everything out, I get negative u in the middle. Okay, so let me see, how is that going to work? Let's do, let me see, is this going to work? Okay, let me check myself. This is going to be 3u squared minus 3u plus 2u minus 2. Okay, so yeah, if I combine like terms, I'm going to get what I started with, so I know I'm right. Okay, all right, so that's how it factors. Okay, I am going to go back to sine of x now. So this is going to be 3 times u is the same thing as the sine of x plus 2 times the sine of x minus 1 equals 0. Okay, and you can multiply this back out. Okay, you're going to get exactly what we started with 3 sine squared x minus the sine of x minus 2 equals 0. Okay, all right. So we know how factoring works. We have one side equal to zero. We factor the non-zero side, and then we have to take each factor, the things that we're multiplying together, set them equal to zero, and solve. Okay, so the first equation that I need to set equal to zero is three times the sine of x plus two equals zero. And then secondly, I need to take the sine of x minus one is equal to zero and solve that as well. Okay, so if we solve these two equations, we will be good to go. All right, I am going to start with equation number two because it just looks easier. Okay, so I'm going to add one to both sides. I am looking for an angle whose sine is positive one. Okay, again, we need to solve uh, between zero and two pi. Okay, so one revolution of the unit circle. Okay, so here we go. We're trying to solve sine of x is equal to positive one, okay? So we know that the sine of theta is associated with the y-coordinate, okay? So we need to be looking for angles here that have a y-coordinate of one, okay? Boom, here we are, okay? So the radian measure that we're interested in here is pi over two, okay? If you scan the rest of the unit circle, Okay, no other coordinate here has a, no other y coordinate is positive one. Okay, so this is gonna be the only angle that works. Okay, so I'm gonna say that my x value needs to be pi over two. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna go back and jot this down. Okay, so the only solution here is going to be pi over two. Okay, all right, now I need to go back and handle this other 
equation, okay? So three times the sine of x plus two is equal to zero, okay? This is now a linear trigonometric equation, okay? It's got one trig function sine of x, it's raised to the first power, okay? So we know to isolate it. So I'm gonna move the two over. I'm gonna get three sine of x is equal to negative two, divide by three, I get the sine of x is equal to negative two thirds. Okay, well, when I go back to the unit circle, nobody has, nobody has a y value like that. Okay, nobody has a y value of negative two thirds. So what, what do I do? Okay, well, let's go back, okay? We want x. x is trapped by the sine. What's gonna get rid of the sine? Well, sine inverse. Okay, so let's take the sine inverse of both sides. Okay, so let me write this out. So on the left, we're gonna have the sine inverse of sine of x is equal to the sine inverse of negative two thirds. On the left, the sine inverse and the sine will cancel leaving you with x. We need to compute the sine inverse of negative two thirds. Okay, we have to do this on a calculator. Remember when I told you in the beginning of this section that sometimes you're going to get decimal answers because an exact value is not going to be possible? Well, here's your first example, okay? We went to the unit circle. No angle that appears on the unit circle has a y-coordinate of negative two-thirds. So we have to go this route and we're going to get a nasty decimal, okay? When we go plug this into the calculator, does it matter whether we're in degrees or radians, okay? Well, the answer is... When we're working this problem, we're told to return the angles in radians. So we need a radian angle spit out. So we need to be in radians. Okay, so I'm in degrees right now. So I need to go change over to radians. And I'm going to do the sine inverse of negative two thirds. Okay, here it is. Okay, all right. This is a radian measure. I'm gonna go jot what we got out of the calculator. I'm gonna go write that down, okay? So x is equal to negative 0 0.729, 7276, 562. Okay, this is in radians. This is, it's, it's weird, okay? We are so used to degrees, okay, that this can be bothersome, okay? It's hard to interpret, okay? Um, so here's my best advice to you, okay? Since you're working with this, okay, you not only have to, you know, give all the angles but within zero and two pi, but you also have to write a general solution, okay? And this is hard to work with. So I would just go ahead and convert this to degrees because that's gonna make working with it a lot easier, okay? So if you remember how to convert to degrees, okay? If you have something in radians, you're going to multiply by 180 over pi, okay? That is the conversion factor, okay? Um, so here we go. Let's go back to our calculator. We're going to multiply this answer by 180 over pi, and this is going to send this to degrees, okay? So I'm going to write the whole decimal expansion out here, okay, in case I need it. So this is going to be negative 41.81 zero three one four nine degrees make sure if you have a degree angle you put the degree symbol otherwise it's understood to be in radians okay so this is the angle we got that satisfies this sine of x is equal to negative two-thirds well it's a negative angle so guess what that means it's not between zero and two pi radians, which is zero degrees and 360 degrees, okay? So we, it is a solution. It is a solution, but we cannot put it in this box because it's not between zero and two pi. So what in the world do we do? Okay, well, I'm gonna draw this out, okay? It really, when you get into this decimal stuff, when you're working with a non-exact answer, it really, really is in your best interest to draw a sketch of what's going on, okay? So here we go. I am going to draw an x and y 
pair of axes here. Okay, so here's my x-axis. And then I'll come back with a y. Okay, and then I'm going to put like a circle on here to be the unit circle. Okay, so give me a second to get this drawn. All right, so here we go. Okay, this angle, where is it? Okay, well, it's negative 41 degrees or negative 42 degrees approximately. Okay, so if we start uh, here with our initial side, we're going to rotate clockwise because it's negative and we're going to rotate about 42 degrees. Okay, so say it's right here. Okay, so this is the, this negative 41.81 blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's that angle. Okay, we need a positive version of it. Okay, so we are looking at this spot on the unit circle. Okay. How can we get to the same exact place, but have a positive angle instead of a negative one? Okay. Well, we need to add one revolution, a positive revolution. Okay. So that will get us to the exact same spot on the circle. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this crazy angle and I'm going to add 360 degrees, okay, because that'll find me an angle that's coterminal with it, and it should be a positive measure, okay, so I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to add 360 degrees, and I do not know what I just typed, okay, here's 360, okay, if we add that, okay, here is a positive angle that is a solution, okay, so I'm going to again write out the whole decimal expansion here, okay, so 318, point one eight nine six eight five one this is still in degrees okay so that is basically this angle if i start in standard position along the positive x-axis and i rotate counterclockwise that is this green angle okay so let me the, we're not done okay this is a very complicated type of problem okay so just hang with me okay what we know here okay i'm gonna label these two guys okay this is x1 this is the first solution this one is a solution but it's not between zero and two pi so i had to add 360 degrees here to get a positive angle okay so this is going to be x2 this is a solution and it can go in the box is once we convert it to radians okay all right, here's the thing. What have we been after? Okay, we need the sine. We know the sine of this particular angle. I'm going to put sine of x2. x2 is this 318 degree number. Okay, its sine value is negative two thirds. Okay, watch. I mean, we know this. I'm going to store this angle in angle A. I'm going to call it A so I don't have to keep typing it over again. If I do the sine, and I need to change to degrees because um, we, we're, this is a degree, the angle's in degrees here. If I take the sine of this angle, I'm going to get negative two-thirds, okay? So that's what we want, okay? Now look at this. This is where it gets confusing, okay? Remember, we're trying to find all the solutions within one revolution of the unit circle, okay? There is a second angle in between zero and two pi that's gonna have the same sine value, okay? Well, where is it gonna be located, okay? Well, the sine value is negative. It's negative two thirds. Sine is positive in quadrants one and two, but it's negative in quadrant three, okay? So what we can do, if you wanna visualize where this is gonna be, draw straight across on the unit circle. Okay, whatever point is right here is gonna have the same Y coordinate. So it's going to have the same sine value, okay? So we are looking for some angle, okay? And I'm gonna draw it in blue, okay? We're looking for this blue angle, okay? which, how do you draw it? Well, you start at the positive x-axis and you rotate counterclockwise until you get right here. This is gonna be the angle x3. Its sine is also 
negative two thirds. The question becomes, how do we get it? Okay, well, just based on basic geometry, okay, see this little red angle here? This angle in gray is equal to this angle, okay? So how much does this red angle measure? Well, if you take its absolute value, okay, because I'm not considering direction here, it's 41.81 blah, 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 that many degrees, okay? So that means this angle over here is going to be 41.81 blah, blah, blah degrees, okay? But the entire blue angle is going to be the top half of the, of the circle, which is 180 degrees, plus this 41.81 business, okay? So in degrees, this next angle, this other angle is going to be 180 degrees plus the 41 point eight one and so on okay so it is going to be remember uh let's see here i used well i'll do this i'll just type it in 180 plus 41.810349 okay so this is what the other angle is in degrees so 22181 zero three one four nine okay that's the degree measure okay so x3 is one of the solutions between zero and two pi as is x2 okay to go in the box we need to put them in degree or sorry we need to convert them to radians okay so here we go okay I am going to, you didn't have to do all this. I just think it's a lot easier to work in degrees than radians. Okay, so I'm going to take the second angle, which is the 318 degree angle here. Why am I carrying all the digits? Well, because I need it to be accurate. This is for accuracy purposes. Okay, so I'm going to take that degree measure to convert it back to radians. The conversion factor is pi over 180. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Okay, and then I'm going to have to convert the other angle, okay, which is 221 point something, okay, 8103, I can just look at the calculator, 149, that many degrees, again, you're going to multiply by pi over 180, okay, and then that's going to give us our angles, okay. So let's see here. Let's go to the calculator. I already have the 221 pulled up, so I'm going to convert that one first since I already have it pulled up. I'm going to multiply by pi over 180. Okay, so there we go. And this is going to be our angle in radians. Remember the directions at the beginning of this section. If you have a decimal, you need to round it to four places after the decimal point. So this is going to be 3.8713. 3.8713, okay? All right, so that's one of these guys that can go in the box. Okay, let me go ahead and convert the other one. Let me write this down first. Okay, and then we're gonna take the 318 number. I think I have that stored in A. Okay, so I'm going to multiply that also by pi over 180. Okay, there it is. We need to round this to four places after the decimal. So it's going to be 5535. Okay, so this one's going to be 555. Five, five. Oops. Hold on. Okay, so 5.5535. Okay, so that's the other angle, and these are radian measures. That's why they look so weird. All right, so we have found our angles, and actually, I forgot to write. There was a third solution. Okay, if we go back up, remember um, these crazy answers we just got were from solving three times the sine of x plus two equals zero. Okay, um, we had previously found that pi over two is also a solution. I should have written that in the box early on, but I didn't. Okay, so I'll add that. So there are three angles 
okay, between 0 and 2 pi that are solutions to our equation. Pi over 2 is an exact answer. The other two angles, you know, we cannot get an exact answer out of them, and so we have to leave them as decimal decimals rounded to four places after the decimal point, okay? So the last thing that we need to do here is convert this or just write this down uh, to come up with the formula for all solutions here, okay? So if we go back to our original equation, remember, we're dealing with sine here, okay? Sine has a period of 2 pi, okay? So what we will do here, um, when we look at this, we have three angles within one period of sine, okay? Three angles between 0 and 2 pi. The period of sine is 2 pi. So I'm just going to write a general statement for each of these, okay? So the first thing I'm going to write here, and I'll kind of color code them, okay? I need to take the first solution, and it doesn't matter which order these guys go in, but the first solution is approximately 3.8713 radians. I need to add integer multiples of the period. So like that, okay? This is going to be finding everything coterminal with this blue angle, meaning the point on the, the unit circles right here, okay? And then for the second solution, okay, just take the solution that's between 0 and 2 pi, add integer multiples, of the period, okay? I'm using 2 pi here because we're in radians, okay, instead of the, the 360. And then for the last one, I need to find anything coterminal with pi over 2. So just take pi over 2, add integer multiples of 2 pi, okay? That will get you anything coterminal with 2 pi, okay? And again, we need to just state out to the side where n is an integer. This was an extremely tough problem. It's probably the toughest type of equation in this entire section.